Futurecast. This week on the Deep Leadership Podcast. If there's something you're passionate about, but you've got a, a pretty shallow pond of experience in, you know, just look to look to your other wins and your other experiences and draw on that to to to, to push you into uh, something new. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today. It's another beautiful day here in North Carolina, and I'm enjoying a hot cup of coffee from our friends at the Salty Sailor Coffee Company. Salty Sailor is a better-known coffee brand and is the official coffee of the Deep Leadership Podcast. Listeners get 10% off their amazing selection of fresh roasted coffee by going to SaltySailorCoffee.com and entering the code DEEP at checkout. Today's episode is also brought to you by our other sponsors, Leader Connect, Ignite Management Services, and Liberty Strength. All these sponsors help me bring these shows to you each and every week, so I highly encourage you to click on their links below and check them out. In this episode of the Deep Leadership Podcast, I'm joined by Charles Mayfield, the founder of Faro Skin Care. We sat down and talked about what it takes to build a business from scratch and how your unique talent stack can help you as an entrepreneur. Now, this was a great conversation. I know you'll enjoy. So are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real world actionable advice from John as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Charles Mayfield. Charles is a father, best-selling author, entrepreneur, and risk management strategist. He is the founder of Faro Skincare, a lard-based skincare brand that was launched following Charles' unique experiences as a regenerative farmer and health enthusiast. Prior to launching Faro, Charles started Mayfield Pastures, a regenerative farming enterprise focused on producing high-quality pasture-based meat. In addition to his farming background, Charles is also co-author of the Paleo Comfort Food Cookbook series, and I'm excited to have him on the show to discuss how his nutrition, culinary, farming, health coaching, and risk management experiences provided him the perfect talent stack to start up a skincare brand. So Charles, welcome to the show. John, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's so great to have you on the show. We know each other outside of uh, outside of the podcast. So, uh, And I'm excited to talk about your company because I think it's a phen- phenomenal company and the products are amazing. So um, yeah, so I thought it'd be great to have you on the show and talk you talk through a little bit about how you started the brand, why it's important, and uh, again, how your talent stack made you uniquely qualified to do this particular entrepreneurial venture. But first of all, tell us how Pharaoh Skincare came to be. Well, the, the really short answer is I got an awful sunburn, which which most folks can can relate to. And uh, candidly, in, a, in an act of curiosity and desperation, I, I decided to treat it with lard from pigs I was I was raising at the time. This was this was uh, this was July fifth, two thousand nineteen. I'll never forget the day. And uh, you know, I have had a couple of really epic sunburns in my life, and decided to cover my skin in this in the lard from pigs I was raising that I, I had in my refrigerator. I was using it to cook and fry foods. And, um, you know, John, it, I, I put it on and then I put it on again the next morning. And, and, uh, you know, for, for your listeners that have had a really epic sunburn, it was, I got almost instantaneous relief, but more importantly, in a couple days, the sunburn was gone, which was nice, but, uh, I never peeled. And I've had an interesting sort of nutritional journey with paleo and all these other things. And so you, whenever you make a, a lifestyle or dietary change and, and you feel the effects, you, you pay attention. And so, I, man, when, when I, I watched my skin like a hawk for three or four weeks, and uh, when I never peeled, that was really a light bulb moment for me. Well, it's interesting. Did you, um, obviously it didn't expect that high level of performance, but did you start looking at the research behind, by, behind, uh, lard and, and how it potentially could help skin or, 
or you know, just was was there just this aha moment? Like this is something here. This is something that people maybe people aren't talking about or thinking about. Yeah, the great question. The, the the research has all happened after the fact. The um, <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, the 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 more expansive story is I grew up. Uh, my mom's from Mobile, Alabama, and so we would go down there and spend a week or two in the summer. And so, you know, just inevitably, there's sunburns, and I come home with this just awful sunburn, and there was a little tick in my head. My mom would keep aloe vera yeah. in the refrigerator on those trips. So if you did get, you know, barbecued, you had this really cool, uh, you know, cream, uh, to, to spread on. And outside of that, it was just, you know, it's fat. I, I, I work with lard all the time cooking. And so you're constantly getting it on your hands and, you know, you end up just rubbing it on your face or, or that's, at least that's what I was doing. And, um, yeah, beyond that, it was just a problem potential solution. I live in a small, live in a small town. And so the medicine cabinet was empty to begin with. So, you know, the drugstores are closed. And so, yeah, I, it, it wasn't much beyond that. And of course I've done a lot of research since then, uh, as it relates to pigs and lard and how similar they are to humans. And, um, but, but most importantly, it worked. And so uh, I love that. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it, we, it's like, we, you found something that worked. Uh, you do the research, you find that there's there's something here. What can what can lard based skincare products do to help solve some of the some of the problems in the skincare industry? Mm, great question. Well, uh, for starters, we're an animal, not a plant. And if you look, if you look, and we're certainly not a petroleum derivative. So if you look at the fat, skincare is really a fat based industry. Uh, most of those. Products are, are emulsified and emulsification of water and fat. But if you look at, you know, again, read your labels, uh, the vast majority of fats, uh, if you're lucky, are a plant-based fat. Uh, if you're unlucky-ish, I would say a seed-based fat. And then the worst of the kind is a petroleum derivative. And so for starters, lard is biologically way more similar to humans than coconut oil or shea butter or, or petrolatum, which is the key component in uh, Vaseline. Um, so that, that's that's for starters. And then I would say on, t- on top of that, and, and maybe even more prevalent uh, it, or important, the a lot of the chemicals and preservatives and emulsifiers that the skincare industry at large uses to, you know, perpetuate the shelf life of their product to keep it from going, you know, again, you're emulsifying a fat. And so it's the water in these creams that... Um, that will inevitably feed bacteria and, you know, airborne bacteria gets in the cream or whatever. And so it's those chemicals that are uh, really, a lot of them are really toxic for us. Now, fortunately we get them in small doses, but you know, death by a thousand cuts is still death. And so that's the, that's the real winner uh, with, with our brand and our products is we've taken all of that junk out and and then on top of that, we're using a fat that's that's way more aligned to our skin and our biology. That's interesting, and and not all uh, lard is the same, right? As uh, there's there's a special kind of lard you actually use in this, right? Well, I, we I trademark smart lard. Um, I actually, I'm doing a talk uh, here in a couple months, and I'm talking about the origins of that as well. But I trademark smart lard. We're the first lard based company. To, to, to launch a skincare product. There's, there's a number of tallow based and for your listeners that don't know tallow is from uh, the visceral fat of, of a cat, well, a ruminant, but most commonly a cow lard comes from pigs, obviously. And uh, so there's some tallow products out there, but um, well, let me think about that. What makes lard smart? Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> so you, 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 we're, we're an omnivore. Pigs are an omnivore. Uh, we're a monogastric omnivore. And so we metabolize our diet and our environment uh, very differently than an herbivore. Okay. Or, and, and again, for your listeners that don't know, herbivores have a rumen. So a lot, uh, there's fermentation involved with, with the metabolization of their diet. They're, they're just a different animal. They're a mammal and lots of things and they're great. But, but a pig, if you raise a pig in a healthy, happy environment that a pig would want to raise grow up in, then they have metabolized a positive environment, stored it, 
you know, vitamin D from the sun, pigs metabolize vitamin D the same way we do from the sun. And so you have to do that in order for, I wouldn't have a product if I were relying on the fat from the industrial mm. pig industry. And, and one of the, one of the motivators, I, I suppose, in, in launching the company was really trying to feature pasture pork as a, as a, as an absolute staple, not only dietarily and environmentally, but you know, here's this one-off uh, benefit. In in fact, that in the, the fat is amazing for our skin. Well, I can tell you, you know, um, you know, I've been I've been using your product, the Epic Epic Dermis, it's called, and it's it's like a hand cream. I guess the best way mm-hmm. to call it, I guess the best way to describe describe it. And you know, I I spend a lot of time in the gym. My hands get beat up, and I've used all sorts of different products, off the shelf products, and uh, nothing seems to work as well as. Uh, you know, when I first, when I first met you, we were talking about lard base. I was like, ah, I don't understand that. It doesn't, you know, it didn't naturally make sense to me, but now that I've used the products and, uh, and I've seen, there's nothing like it, like compared to everything else I've tried, um, just it, it lasts longer. It's easy to, easy to apply. Um, it just, it, it, it's really, really good. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I was actually shocked at how good the product is. And it's sort of, as you know, I've been telling everybody I know about how great this product is. But um, do you find the same thing that people are surprised when they when they uh, learn how effective lard based uh, skin products are? I, I wouldn't say that I'm surprised. I, I see a lot of their surprise for sure. And we still got some stuff, you know, from a business standpoint to button up as it relates to the, the customer experience and and coaching them through because it is a very unique product, as as you know, it's full fat. There's no there's no water in there, and so a little goes a long way and. It sits on the skin for a little bit before it before it really soaks in, but it it does soak in. And you know, I like to tell people if your skin went to a buffet line <laughs> of fats, it would you know just just like a human, it's going to preferentially like eat what it really really wants to eat. And and I I, I will contend that it it's going to eat lard preferentially over anything. Yeah, well, I mean, my experience is it's phenomenal, and I and again, like I said, I was. I was surprised, um, and uh, uh, like n- not only was I surprised it worked, but I was also surprised it's better than anything I've ever used before. So that's the thing that was just kind of like over the top. And, uh, and what other products that you do you have in the family? We have we have four products now. Uh, we're about to launch a soap in about a month or so. But we have so we have Epidermis is is the one that I think I sent you a number of them. But Epidermis is our portable yep. pack. Well, we, we launched with our what's called our total skincare bundle, and so it's it's three products. It's a it's a face food, neck up, skin food, neck down, and then I, I uh, included a sublingual uh, CBD elixir. And so uh, you know C- CBD is a cannabis derived, hemp derived product. So there's a lot of people out there that it, I, I'd say there's equal curiosity, skepticism, and just don't know. But I, I would contend that um, it, it's an amazing uh, molecule. Uh, this is the non-psychoactive compound in, in the cannabis or, or hemp plant. And it, it's it's been shown to reduce inflammation, assist with sleep, uh, re- really sort of from the inside out, encourage your body to, to, to get to a state of homeostasis. And, and of course, you know, our skin needs permission to thrive, just like our organs and every part of our body. And so I tell not a lot of people use our, our elixir, but I think that's probably a me marketing problem. But um, but yeah, so we have four products right now uh, and you can you can buy them separately. They're not all bundled together, but that's it. That's fantastic. Well, like I said, I mean, uh, I've, I've mostly just used the Epic Termis and so need to try the rest of them. But uh so tell us a little bit about because this is interesting because you know the company came about because of regenerative your experience with regenerative farming and help, help us understand for those that may not understand what that is what is regenerative farming and how is that a possible solution for many of our global challenges these days? Goodness, uh, well to keep we we can go short and then expand on that. I, <laughs> Stay at, short. At, at, yeah. At its at its core definition, this is, and this is my definition. There's a lot floating out there. Yeah. At, at its core definition, I would say that regenerative farming is the best and 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 most efficacious way to build soil. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in nature, in nature, soil is built. If you think about like the corn belt of America, those soils were built by herding herbivorous ruminants, you know, the bison, 
um, followed by migratory birds. And they never stayed the same place for very long because of predation, right? And so uh, I, I, I contend that regenerative farming is, is working in lockstep with nature uh, to, to facilitate the, the growing of food and the, and the building of soil. That's, I mean, that's the shortest definition I can give you. Well, it's interesting because I think become, we, we've all become aware of the massive amounts of chemicals um, that are being used in all the products that we use today. And I think mo more people are starting to recognize that there's something wrong with the things that we're putting on our skin, the things that we're eating, uh, the things that we're exposed to every day. And so I think, I think more and more people are trying to find more natural solutions mm -hmm. to, to their day to day. And it sounds like what you've discovered is that, yeah, there, there is natural ways to take care of the things that we need to take care of, uh, that also are good for the environment as well. Sure. Well, and, and I like to look at the data, uh, and, and the data tells us that we're losing, I forget, it's like 44 cubic tons of topsoil a day. Mm. Right. And, and there are several global organizations. I don't remember if it was the who, or maybe, um, there's there's several organizations that have recognized we have like 60 harvests left globally and the the problem with industrial farming is it's unsustainable yeah, mm -hmm. chemical fertilizers you know again back to this farming piece uh chemical fertilizers uh pesticides herbicides fungicides all of these things uh are are well they're killing our waterways as well but but they're um they're they're terrible for the soil they kill all the organic matter in the soil, and then you then you don't have soil anymore. You got dirt. Dirt blows away, and so um, so yeah, we have a product that is an extension of a system that builds soil, restores nature to you know natural systems, and and, and the the coolest part about it is we can actually through through technology we can accelerate the building of soil. You know, in nature, the, the those those bison. They come through once mm. and then, and they were on their way, uh, in, in a regenerative farming model. And of course we were, we were a micro model, but you've got great example, wide oak pastures, polyface farms are some really scaled up bigger examples of what I'm talking about. You can, you can actually push the gas pedal on, on that natural system. And, and, and it's been shown to sequester, uh, more carbon, you know, carbon's a big, big talking point these days with all this climate change hullabaloo, which I, I would say a lot of it is hullabaloo. And, uh, but, but we've, we've got abs absolute third party tested data around farming this way. And it actually being a net carbon sink, mm. not an emitter. And that's just so counter narrative, but you know, again, Pharaoh is here to say, not only do you heal the land and, and eat, you know, high quality, nutritional dense food, you also have glowing skin, so <laughs> that's fantastic. So the uh, you say the yeah uh, you have a quote that says the swine is divine, but the lard is hard. That's right. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? That's kind of interesting. Well, I, I, the, the the pig is an unbelievably amazing animal, uh, just soup to nuts. And I I've done a really deep dive in in our history with pigs, you know, for this talk and uh, and and so. The, Here's an animal that, quite frankly, on an industrial scale, we have lost respect for. We don't treat it very well. I mean, I, you know, half the hormones that the medical industry uses, we're deriving those from pigs. You know, pigs save our lives every day through whether it's heart valves, uh, you know, through heart surgery or uh, epinephrine. We harvest epinephrine for EpiPens in pigs. And so they're this amazing creature. And most of them raise, are raised and, and fed an environment that is just so far removed from how they were, how, how they're meant to live. And so, yeah, I mean, I just, I want to tell people that pigs are amazing. I want to, I want to showcase that, um, in as many ways as I can, uh, because they, they reserve, they deserve our respect. So, so the swine is divine. The Lord is hard. You have to raise a, a pig in an environment where they get plenty of sunshine, fresh air. They're not overly crowded. They're not fed garbage. One of, mm. Similar to humans, almost identical to humans, 
uh, the, the, the downside to a pig in an industrial setting is that it is an omnivore. So you can feed it almost anything and it will survive, not thrive, but survive. And so all of this sort of fits together to, to me promoting uh, better animal husbandry, uh, better skin and, and a healthier soil and planet. That's fantastic. I, I just uh, I just uh, watched the latest season of Clarkson's Farm. I don't know if you've ever heard of the show, but it's uh, Jeremy Clarkson. He used to be on Top Gear. He's got a farm in England. And uh, this season he brought pigs on on uh, on the uh, on the farm. And it's it's remarkable. And they go through an entire year in, in two two uh, different litters of, of pigs. Uh, and it's just amazing how um, interactive the pigs were with mm-hmm with uh with them on the farm what's it like raising these pasture uh pasture roaming pigs what what is that like it, you know i think of charlotte's web the book you know but but what what is it what is it like uh and how are pigs in their terms of their personalities and, and when they're in these kind of these good environments well they're they're quite gregarious uh so so pigs are very intelligent animals right? but uh i have heard studies or heard heard it it's been read that, um, you know, they have the mental capacity of about a three to four year old human. So, you know, think about a toddler and what they're capable yeah. of doing. They're highly intelligent. Um, they're omnivores. Okay. And so everything's a potential meal. So they, you know, they don't run so much as come check you out. So in a, in a farmer, uh, farm animal setting, they're always, they're always up there for a belly scratch or, you know, they, they, yeah. they very quickly know who feeds them. I, I, they can recognize your voice. And I, I, I've had moments where, you know, there were no fences and we had to go from here to a couple hundred yards away. And it's like, here, pig, here, pig. And they just, they just fall right in line. And that's, again, that's due to their sort of omnivorous nature. You know, um, all herbivores are prey animals. So cows, goats, you know, sheep. And so their intuitive instinct is to run mm. or get away because they're they they they've been prey animals all their life. And not that pigs don't get preyed on by predators, but pigs are also omnivores, so they're they're the predators sometimes. And so there's that piece. Uh, they're just you know when they're when they're little. I I, I I I've got they're not as small now, but when when I got my first pigs, you know I had a three and a four year old, and um, you know when they're little pigs, they're they're, they're, they're perfectly wonderful and content around, around my kids, which is great. Uh, they're just, they're just, they're a lot of fun. They are highly energetic. And when they live a life that's, you know, quite aligned with their biology and, and, and makeup, then, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty calm and, uh, and, 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 and they're also delicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think, um, like I said, having watched that latest season of, of Clarkson Farms, I I, I uh, have a new appreciation because they were fantastic and and just I, the amount of interaction. I was really shocked that you know, like I said, roll over and get a belly scratch. I'm like a dog would. I was like, wow, I didn't realize that they were they were that interactive. So very interesting. Um, well, one of the things that was interesting about you is, and I mentioned it in the introduction. You have like a really unique talent stack that, um, you know, that you have a lot of different experiences. And I was wondering how much did your talent stack play into the successful launch of this, uh, of Pharaoh? You know, you have a lot of experience with, with farming. You have, you know, the health and, and fitness side of it. You've got, you know, uh, you've got all this stuff that sort of leads you into like, being embracing this idea of a large base skincare company. So tell us a little bit about your unique talent st- stack and how that led you to success in this business. Well, I appreciate the reference term talent. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, some of it is, is curiosity. Uh, and, and I would say an avoidance of orthodoxy has, has really served me well. You know, if Pharaoh wouldn't exist, if it weren't this amalgamation of you know, culinary background, my, my fitness background. I, uh, the CrossFit community is really what brought me to paleo. And, um, I, we, we touched on it briefly too. uh, the, um, the risk management. So during the day I'm, I'm, uh, in the insurance business and I, one of my favorite sort of target markets is consumer brands. And so, um, 
yeah, I've been around a lot of consumer brands. I've seen a lot of consumer brands from infancy launch and, you know, some go to the moon and some go away, you know, that's the nature of the business. But, um, but yeah, I think a, a, a willingness, probably the willingness to, to, uh, just sit down and, and look at everything, you know, everyone, I, I, I live a non siloed life is, mm. is probably the best way to, to, uh, phrase it. And so, I, well, I shouldn't say non, I, it took me a little bit, but looking outside of this silo at another silo, you know, here was cooking over here and here was fitness and here was farming, right. And, and, um, being able to sort of get out of one and, and look at all three together is, is really what I, I mean, it, again, Pharaoh would not be here had I, had I not had the culinary background, the nutrition sort of lifestyle, fitness coaching background. And, um, and what happened, I'll tell you what happened, John, is I shined my, I got these cookbooks, right? And you've heard this, you know, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Yeah. And forever I shined that lens on food and just food. And then I had this, you know, epic moment with this sunburn and it just, at, at some point I shined that lens on skincare and now, you know, I, now I shine that lens everywhere. I shine it on, you know, my local government politics. I shine it, you know, it's, but it's just a, I would say it's, it's an equal departure from orthodoxy, uh, the proper level of skepticism. And, uh, and I found a, I found something that worked. And I had young kids and that, that they were probably as much of an inspiration uh, as anything. Um, and so, I, you know, a desire to bring them along for the ride, um, you know, as a dad and also as an entrepreneur uh, was also exciting. I, I, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, it is. You know, it's interesting, too, because I think, you know, we, we you meet a lot of people that want to start businesses. And I talk to a lot of you know, entrepreneurs or potential entrepreneurs or, or, and, um, you know, and, and I think one of the things is, is, you know, like I started my company eight years ago and I'm doing something I know a lot about, like I've spent a lot of time in this industry. So long before I started my company, I spent, you know, 22 years in this industry, like, you know, learning from other people in the industry. Right. So while I got a paycheck, I learned how to do this really well. And so by the time it was ready for me to start a business, I had a deep talent stack to be able to yep. call on to be able to start my business where I knew that I would be successful because I knew what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think I see a lot of young people who say, well, I want to start a company. And it's like, what do you want to do? It's like, well, you know, they, they, they sort of miss out on doing that assessment of where are your talents? Where are the mm -hmm. things that you are, you know, experienced in or good at or have a, you know, a deep curiosity for, you know, like for you with, with eating and, and farming, and you have these deep curiosity, you want to learn, you want to get better. And so this makes you kind of uniquely qualified. You know, um, so I, I've also, I'm often telling entrepreneurs, like, you know, or future entrepreneurs, what are, what are your talent stacks? What are you good at? What, do you, what have you experienced in? Because I think if we can tap into that, we're going to be more successful as you are with your company. So uh, I don't know what, you know, because I think that you have, you have shown that if you, if you embrace your talent stack, there's something unique that's there that uh, that you can that you can take and run with it, it like in this particular case, you know, this yeah. skincare business. Well, I I would say, and I, I I'm saying this because this is what other people tell me. Uh, what one talent I possess is storytelling, mm -hmm. and, and you know, with any business, uh, with certainly with any business that involves a product, even if that product is virtual, uh, you got to be able to tell a story. And and what was interesting early on. And, and I still struggle with this to some degree, but I'm getting better at it is I had zero experience in the skincare industry. Mm. I, and now I have like this much, right? Just a, just a skosh of it. But I had, I had, you know, almost 15 years of experience in, in the health wellness, you know, nutrition world. I've got a, you know, a boatload of experience in the financial and insurance risk mitigation world, but being able to the, Again, if if it works, and I, you know, I've I've been down the financial planning and insurance route, and I've seen, you know, if you do this, it will it works, and I've seen that. And so, I would I would tell any of your listeners if you're thinking about starting, 
if there's something you're passionate about, but you've got a, a pretty shallow pond of experience in, you know, just look to look to your other wins and your other experiences and draw on that to 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 push you into uh, something new. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, you, you know, again, the skincare was a sort of adjacent to other things you're working on, but certainly uh, all it led, you know, all the other skills, all the other experiences sort of led to where that could be an option to you. So I said the same, so the same thing with, with people who are thinking about starting a company, what are, what are the things that you have and how can that lead you to something that might be adjacent or something very similar? And if you don't have those skills or you don't have those experiences, go get them. Go work for somebody in it's, the industry in that industry, right? If you say, "Well, yeah. I, I just I'm not I'm not comfortable with this particular route I'm going to go," well, go get a job for two years in that industry and learn, mm-hmm. and then 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 you might then your two years of experience now that that can help you, you mm-hmm. know, that next step. So, I think that's fantastic. Uh, again, I I think it's great. Your story is kind of uh, fun fun to see how you've taken all these different experiences and put it into something that's. That's uh, really a phenomenal product and a phenomenal company. Um, so what final message would you like to leave with our listeners today? Well, I, w- I would say uh, success in entrepreneurship and success in being a leader involves you being healthy. And uh, whether you're a hard charging gym rat or a, or a you know, femme fatale you know, killer in the sales world, uh, your skin is your largest organ. Uh, stop putting garbage on it because that's, you know, death by a thousand cuts is still death. But uh, yeah, just do just um, commit to healthiness, you know, a healthy living, healthy lifestyle. And there's plenty of references out there. We have a product in the skincare space that, that can certainly do that and, or at least get you closer to a, a to a state of, you know, ready to go. And, uh, but yeah, I, I would say your, your health is, is, at the top of the list. And so prioritize that and everything else will, will fall into place. Absolutely. Such great advice. We've talked about this before on the podcast, lead yourself first. And part of leading yourself is being physically fit, taking care of your health uh, and making sure that you have your, 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 your life in order so that you can get out there and do the difficult things of leadership. And so, but if you don't take care of your health, if you don't take care of your body, uh, you're not going to be there for your employees. You're not going to be there for leading your businesses. And uh, you're not going to be leading, you're not going to be providing a great example uh, for the people that depend on you. So take care of your body, uh, take care of your uh, skin. Uh, That's all right. With, uh, with these products. It's fantastic. Um, Charles, how can people find out more about you and your company? Yeah, our, our website is pharaoh.life. And I think you said you were, before we hopped on, you were going to type that out in the show notes. Um, but it's F A R R O W. Uh, for those listing alone, uh, but pharaoh.life is our website. There's a, there's a pop-up window. If you're willing to give us your first name and email address, we'll ship you off a discount code, uh, to save on your first order. And, uh, it it doesn't look like a traditional skincare website. You know, we really feature the farm and the pig and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a fundamental part of our business, but, uh, but yeah, that's where folks can find us. And then on uh, Instagram, Pharaoh skin, and uh, Twitter, Pharaoh Life. I'm reasonably active on those platforms. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I follow you on Instagram, and you do post a lot of great videos um, and a lot of, a lot of, you know, sharing kind of, you know, the, about the brand, about your life. And I think it's really good uh, for people to see it. So, uh, listeners, here's a real life entrepreneur that that's making making it in a uh, in a consumer product. Um, that he is uh, taken from an idea and has launched it in the product. He's very successful. He's growing this business. And again, I wanted him on the show, have him on the show to show what's possible if you take your talent stack and uh, apply it towards an entrepreneurial endeavor is that you could go down the same uh, road that Charles has with Pharaoh. Um, so I encourage you to check out Pharaoh. Uh, we have the link in the show notes. Check out his company. Um, get that discount code. Get yourself a, a product. If you're a gym rat like me, get that Epic Dermis. It's really good. Highly recommend that. Uh, so I think I even put a rec. I even uh, reviewed it on your website because I loved it so much. So, <laughs> so fantastic product, uh, Charles. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for what all you're doing, and congratulations on all your success so far with Pharaoh. 
Thank you, John. And thank you for, for this podcast and your books. I, it's been an amazing resource for me and, and, uh, you are a, a beacon, uh, you're, you're a lighthouse, a Navy reference. You're a lighthouse to, to us, uh, budding entrepreneurs, uh, and, and business owners. So thank you. Well, thank you. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. Take care.